In this episode of On Two Wheels, we take on the Pacific Coast Highway on tiny little adventure bikes. Or do we? This is the summer the coast was closed. Welcome to On Two Wheels. This time around, two wheel friends, we're taking on the California coast. If you're not familiar, the road that runs along the Pacific Ocean from Morro Bay north to Monterey Bay is extremely twisty, extremely scenic, and extremely popular among all kinds of motorists, but especially motorcyclists. That is true. Ari and I are no different. We try to ride this route, what, once a year? Every summer. Yeah, yeah. every summer, right? Whether it's going to Laguna Seca or just for the sake of taking on these curves because they are just that good. However, this summer, there is a problem. Yeah, uh, this summer the coast suffered some trauma and there is <laughs> a huge landslide literally blocking the road at the south and then at the north there's a bridge out. So as far as most people are concerned, this entire stretch of coastline is closed and inaccessible. Mm -hmm. Key phrase being, most people. Mm. We figure we can get through, not on the coast road which is closed and not on the highways inland, yeah. but rather on dirt and gravel roads that run along these ridges in between. Yeah, so it's gonna be mostly off-road, but we've got our map, we've got our destination in Monterey, we've got camping equipment, and most importantly, we've got motorcycles. In this case, Kawasaki's new Versus X300 and Honda's new CRF250L Rally. Yes, sir. That is a lovely little baby Versus you've got there. Isn't it? <laughs> Adorable. It is. It's based in the Ninja 300, so the same engine, but it's got that rakish Versus styling. Indeed. It's got longer travel suspension, wire spoke wheels, and then a bigger 19-inch uh, up front so they can handle rough terrain. Yes. Pretty much ready to take on anything, but not as ready as this thing looks to be. Isn't it handsome? It really is. Yeah. Yeah, I thought the terrain between here and Monterey might be a little bit more gnarly than Aerie did, which is why I brought this here rally. Basically a CRF 250L, yep. but 2.7 gallon fuel tank. So a little more gas. Correct, Amundo. Uh, this uh, Dakar styling slash uh, wind protection, which yeah. is actually pretty nice. About an inch more suspension travel and a few little tweaks to the engine to try and squeeze a little bit more juice out of that 250cc engine. Yeah, so yeah. we've got a 250, we've got a 300. We're dealing with a couple of real fire breathers here today. That's correct. And that brings us to our next point. People, if you have a heart condition, if you're not sitting down, if you live in a quiet neighborhood, you really turn the volume down, please, and brace yourself. Because when we fire these things up, Ooh. the beginning of this road trip is gonna be like hell on earth. Okay, so they're not exactly rocket ships, but thanks to the 55 mile per hour speed limit, these little bikes were more than enough for cruising the stretch of the coast that was actually open. From the charming two-block village of San Simeon to the impressive Hearst Castle far off in the distance, there was still plenty to see along this famous stretch of road. A personal favorite is observing the local wildlife and the elephant seals. You'd be amazed at what they can teach you about conflict resolution. <laughs> In the era of fake news, you can't really, uh, you know, trust everything you read on the internet, right? So we wanted to see it with our own eyes, so we rode out, and sure enough, there it is, an enormous pile of earth that has slid off the side of that mountain and into the ocean. It's pretty epic in person, really. Yeah, I was thinking, you know, maybe some dump trucks full of dirt, but that is a <laughs> substantial amount of crap piled in the PCH, so yeah, no doubt that it's blocked. We wasted half a day coming out here so we could check it out to verify that it was, in fact, fact but uh, we gotta get to getting, man. Yeah, certainly didn't plan this into our little detour coming up here and hanging out for part of the day. So we need to get back to our detour and hopefully get up on this ridge and make it to our campsite, you know, sometime before midnight at this point. Heading into the wilderness. As soon as we turned off that coast road, we were climbing a mountain, which I guess kind of makes sense. I mean, yeah, that's what happens along, you know, the Big Sur coast. It's you got ocean on one side and cliffs on the other. And while the views along the road are, I mean, world famous and beautiful, 
I'm kind of anticipating some pretty stellar vistas once we get up above all this. Word. Now that we're on some dirt roads, we, we get to exercise the, the dual sport aspect of these bikes. See if you can keep up with this rally, bro. If the bikes were happy on the coast road, then they absolutely loved being off the beaten path. Miles of dirt, incredible views, and the satisfaction of exploring new terrain made for a great afternoon. As usual, the only real problem we had was with each other. Ari thinks this versus can hang with a rally when it comes to the uh off-roadiness. Yeah, Zach's been clowning me, saying this thing isn't a legit <laughs> off-road machine. I mean, it's got everything I need to do whatever I want. Right. Well, you got five inches of suspension travel, street tires, and you got exhaust pipes and oil filters dangling around. So, Ari thinks he's got the chops, as does the Versus, to take on this little mini Everest here. It does have some steep steps in it, huh? <laughs> I don't like your chances. Whatever. We're a long way from home, but I'll give it a go. I'm gonna have to get a run at it. I'm gonna I'm gonna turn around. Do what you need to do. You're gonna help pick <laughs> help pick it up if I need help? I am. I'm there for you, friend. Zach's totally underestimating this bike. It's all high on a CRF rally horse. I am a little scared though. All right. First gear tacked yeah. out. First gear got that burrow gear going. It goes. What? What? Oh, with a wheelie at the top. King of the mountain. That was way too easy. It's that Versus lineup, man. It stands for versatile system. And this little 300 might be the most versatile of them all. Certainly the most off-road capable. I'm going to go down the hill just to show off. Eh. Cannot shut off the ABS. Remember, uh -huh. everybody. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, jeez. I got it. <laughs> well? I didn't think it was going to work out that well at all. I really didn't. Five and a half inches suspension travel. Five and a half inches is all you've ever needed, my friend. <laughs> all right. Well, that's accomplished. I think we have earned a nice respite at a campsite. we got to pitch our tents and... Uh, and a freeze-dried meal. Cook some dinner. We followed what seemed like a dead-end road based on the advice of a toothless local, which, yeah, could have been the wrong decision. But we pushed on along the road, and as the ridge got narrower and the ocean got closer, it was clear that the old guy had steered us in the right direction. Dude, it's just the end of the road. Oh, it's not so much a road anymore as it is a trail. <laughs> <laughs> wow, check this out. What the what? Dude. <laughs> I mean. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh my like gosh. Otherworldly, ab above expectations, doesn't even begin to describe. I mean, we knew we were going to be is. camping on the coast, but this is unbelievable. I mean, you can't go any further. It's like, this has got to be the greatest view on the Big Sur coast. I mean, we've got elevation. We can see so far north, so far south. It's so beautiful. At this point, we got to unpack the bikes, do the whole setting up camp, making yeah. our meal from a plastic bag thing, so. Yep, so, know what that means. Cue the time lapse. Okay, sundown, tent up. Heck yeah, one of <laughs> many successes today. Yeah, indeed. I mean, we got to cruise up the coast and see the landslide firsthand, the uh -huh. mountain of earth that is covering the PCH. Yeah. We went around it, we scrambled up, we found this ridge road, which is amazing. The views are just like unreal. Epic. And then the road ends and we find this campsite. Yeah. Like this is the greatest campsite I've ever stayed at. Like, I mean, it's one of the coolest places I've ever been, yeah, period. It's really spectacular. So good. And now we get to share a tent. Because uh, BFFs. <laughs> because that's the price you pay <laughs> for riding tiny little ADVs. You got to pack a light. That's right. 300 class adventure bikes. Yeah. You get one tent. Speaking of which, we might not have enough water for tomorrow, and you might not have enough gas for tomorrow. You mean we might have enough gas? Yeah, we're our teams. Yeah, we're putting <laughs> okay, this together. That's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. We um, we're pushing it a little bit in that regard. 
So it's an adventure. We're gonna stick to the plan. Yeah. Uh, which is to boogie down the rest of this ridge in the morning, and then we're probably gonna have to jog inland onto some paved two-lane roads, which hopefully will lead us to Carmel Valley, yep. which will lead us to the coast. And from the coast, we'll go north to Monterey, where we will get our just reward. Sounds good. Yeah. All right, okay. man. Let's get some rest. We survived the night, no earthquakes, aliens, or murderers, and we woke up to this. The coast is just socked in with fog. It's cotton as far as the eye can see. What a great way to wake up. Now we just gotta pack, put everything back on the bikes, which is always a huge challenge, then head north to Monterey, way up around that point there. So let's boogie. The Big Sur Coast is spectacular, and if anything, the ridge route above it is even more incredible. But we were still low on liquids, so we made quick work of the dirt and then found our way back to pavement. We filled up on water at a fire station and topped off our tanks at a gas station. Then we put the hammer down on our combined 55 horsepower and motored toward Monterey. With plenty of time on two-lane tarmac and no shortage of opinions, we had nothing better to do than jabber at each other about which bike was better. Okay, final stretch here. We're almost to the destination, Harry. Yeah, I mean, we're back on pavement after riding a bunch of off-road and getting to use these bikes for pretty much everything they're designed for. Yeah, and uh, one thing we've been saying more and more over the past couple of days is what a surprise that Versus is. Very, very impressive. Yeah, I was kind of concerned it was gonna be just another one of those uh, like styling exercises where they're like, oh, we'll put some bigger yep. wheels and like some body work and like, oh, maybe maybe no one will ever really take it off-road. Yep. But if you buy a Versus, you should take it off-road because it works <laughs> really well. It works way better than expected. On the flip side of the impressed situation with the Versus, I'm a little disappointed in the rally. Why is that? Well, price, power, performance, like, I mean, it's got a bunch of suspension travel, but it's so soft and like 21 horsepower. Like, come on guys, why didn't they put the 300 engine in it? Yeah, should have put the 300 engine in it. And what they should do to fix the problem now is put the 500 engine in it because the CRF 500 rally would be pretty rad. If it just had stiffer suspension, yeah. but basically the same bike, it'd be awesome. And, and probably a bigger gas tank, right? Yeah, more gas would be good. Honestly, that's, 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 that is one thing. But the styling kicks ass, and I love the fact that you can get it with that ABS, the same system that they have on the Africa Twin, where you push a button, yep. and it's off-road ABS, so you still have it in the front, but you don't have it in the back. Yep. Like, the Versus, you can't turn it off. You can buy it without ABS, obviously, or you can pull the fuse if you want to. But when you're on the trail, there's not much you can do. Yeah, true enough. I will say, both of these bikes, for what we like about them, what we don't like about them, carried us up along the coast there in fine style, along freeways, along ridge tops, and they hauled all our crap. Pretty good, man. Yeah, can't ask for more. To summarize, amazing little motorcycles and allow us to have such an epic adventure and discover parts of California we've never seen before. Yep, that's what motorcycling's all about, man. Word, well said. All right, we are approaching our final destination, uh -huh. and that can only mean one thing, right? I mean, the whole purpose of the trip, right? The whole point. Hot dogs, and not even very good ones. It was a hot dog all along. You guys thought it was gonna be something special, but it's not <laughs> just a hot dog, they cut down the middle. And it's very greasy. But the point is, you can make a mediocre hot dog delicious. You make it special. Yeah, how, Eric? Tell them how. By putting it at the end of a long and fantastic journey, which is what we have had. It's not about the food. It's about what it took to get here and to enjoy it. That's right. So the lesson today on hot dogs is it doesn't matter if it's good or bad. All hot dogs are created equal. <laughs> All motorcycle rides that end in hot dogs will be fun. Yeah. So. That's it for this episode of On Two Wheels. Hope you guys had a good time, and we hope you're gonna subscribe, and if you got some comments, leave them below. Talking.
Riding. Try to catch me riding uphill. Okay, dokie. Here we go. Big smile. Energy up. And really happy to be here. <laughs> Save the batteries. Save the whales. Save the children. Save it for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stand where the f I want. 15 minutes of gold. You're welcome, Spencer. <laughs> Road class.